Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Sailing the East podcast. I'm Bela Musitz. This is our podcast about sailing the East Coast of the United States. In some episodes, we will focus on passages and destinations. In other episodes, we will talk about boats, equipment, and techniques. And when we come across an interesting individual, we'll try to get them to be a guest on the show. As our frequent listeners can tell, I am doing this episode solo today, as my co-host Mike Wasserman could not make it. So thank you for tuning into the podcast today. This is actually our 30th episode. When Mike and I started this last fall, we were not quite sure how it would go. Mike and I do another podcast on entrepreneurship. That has over 125 episodes, and it's called The Unconventional Path, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Stories and Ideas. If you're interested, check it out. Just search for The Unconventional Path in your favorite podcasting application. We typically release a new episode there every week or two. With our Sailing the East podcast, we have produced one podcast per week for 29 weeks. With the summer sailing season in full swing and the brand new granddaughter, I will be a bit more busy than usual. So I think we'll be releasing a new episode every week or two. We just cannot keep up with the once a week schedule. So just trying to set expectations for our loyal listeners. So let's get to the main topic of today's show. Today's topic is water pumps. Not the water pumps on the engine or the generator, but the water pumps that are part of the water system on the boat. As a reminder, my boat, named Paradox, is a 2009 Hunter 45 Dexalon. I purchased her in September of 2020. And as with anything new, I've been trying to learn how everything works on the boat. I have owned and chartered boats in the past, but each boat has its subtleties. Subtleties and quirks. Getting to know your boat is an important step in becoming a competent mariner. One of the ways I started was by giving the interior of the boat a thorough cleaning. This may sound simple, but it was a great discovery process. What do I mean? Well, by cleaning uh, and wiping down all of the surfaces and vacuuming them out every nook and cranny, lifting up all of the floorboards, removing all of the drawers, opening every cabinet, and removing every panel that is not screwed down, it was just amazing, number one, of how much dust and dirt I found. Well, the boat is 12 years old, and I'm sure parts of the boat have never been cleaned in the past. Now, the previous owner, uh, who was the original owner, uh, kept the boat very, very meticulously. Paradox had only 225 hours on the engine when I purchased her, so she was lightly used for sure. But even with all of that tender love and care the previous owner provided, there was lots of accumulated dirt. An additional benefit of doing all this cleaning is that you get to discover where everything is located. As an added benefit, uh, actually a third benefit, I guess, I also found some additional spare parts I did not know about, including a very nice bosun's chair and some additional manuals. So I feel really good now about knowing the location of all of the key systems on the boat, all of the seacocks, and by the way, there's eight seacocks, the various different tanks. By the way, by the way, there's a total of five different tanks on Paradox. She has three water tanks, one fuel tank, and one holding tank. You know, the winterization process last fall and the unwinterizing process this spring taught me a lot about the water systems on board, including the two heads, two showers, three sinks, and the cockpit shower. And one of the things I discovered is that the shower drains do not consistently drain all the water out from the floor of the shower. Sometimes the shower drains great, and other times two or three inches of water collect in the shower before it will drain out. On boats I've been on in the past, the shower drains typically drain into a shower sump that's located somewhere below the shower. 
these shower sumps are typically an eight or 10 inch box that, ha that is about three or four inches tall. The water from the shower drains into the shower box slash sump via hose and basically uses gravity to get there. Hence, the shower box needs to be lower than the floor of the shower. Uh, so all the water collects in this shower box. Uh, but of course, it's not big enough to hold all of the water that when you're taking a shower. So inside the shower box is a small bilge pump uh, with a float switch. And when the water level gets uh, three quarters full in the shower box, uh, or the shower sump, as they're, I think, mostly called, uh, this, this, pump, this bilge pump turns on, pumps all the water out, uh, and then it shuts off. And then when the water fills the box up again, the cycle repeats. Uh, I've seen many of these types of systems on other boats, and, uh, you know, they work really good. Uh, other than getting clogged with hair or other stuff, which you have to periodically clean out from these uh, shower sumps, they work quite well. Cleaning them out is, you know, not a great task because it's kind of yucky and gucky in there and you got to take the top of it off and sometimes they leak. But, you know, so be it. They, they work reasonably well. Well, on Paradox, I found out the shower drains work differently. So the main reason is there's not sufficient vertical drop from the floor of the shower and the bottom of the boat. So relying on gravity to drain the water uh, out of the shower into a shower sump will not work. So the designers at Hunter uh, installed uh, what are called diaphragm pumps on each of the shower drains. These diaphragm pumps do not rely on gravity, but can actually suck the water out of the drain when the, when it, and then pump it overboard. So these are the same types of diaphragm pumps that are used for deck or anchor wash systems. And it's the same types of pumps that are often used to provide water pressure for the faucets on the boat or the water system on the boat. So last fall, when I was winterizing the boat, I poured you know the normal antifreeze, the non-toxic antifreeze into the shower drains. And uh, I wanted to pump it through the drain system, so I turned on the, uh, the shower pump, drain pump, and uh, noticed that both in the forward and in the rear showers, uh, they were not cons uh, consistently pumping. So I figured maybe there was some sort of obstruction in one of the hoses. Uh, I didn't have you know, enough time last fall to investigate, so I put it on the, the list uh, for spring. You know, sometimes they pump great and other times it wouldn't pump very well so it was really inconsistent well several weeks ago I was back at the boat uh, after she was put in the water and I said okay got to my list of things I had to get done and uh, got to the shower sumps and so I started to investigate so I ran the showers and I noticed that the forward shower seemed to be pumping great so I could hear the pump sucking all the water out of the bottom of the shower drain. So somehow the forward pump had fixed itself. Well, at least for now. The rear shower was still intermittent. So figuring maybe the hoses were clogged, uh, I removed the hoses and found no blockages. So I guess that was a disappointment because that, that wasn't the problem. And there's also a filter on the inlet to the pump so it catches any debris or hair or anything and prevents it from going into the pump. Uh, I opened up the filter because it's a cleanable type of uh, screen mesh filter. And it had some stuff in it, but nothing really that I thought would uh, really hinder the performance of the pump. Uh, so I put everything back together and uh, turned the pump on. And still the pump was not pumping water consistently. Um, at that point in time, I didn't have any more time to continue the investigation uh, as it was time for me to start heading home. Uh, so when I got home, I went to where we all go uh, to learn about stuff these days, to YouTube. And uh, I started searching for Japsco uh, Paramax 4. Uh, Japsco is the brand name. Uh, it's a Japsco pump. Uh, Paramax 4 is the model. And uh, I was, uh, there's actually three of those uh, Paramax, 
uh, pair of max uh, pumps on the boat. There's one for each shower drain. And then there's one with a built-in pressure switch that actually provides the water pressure for the boat. So there's three of these pumps on the boat. So I soon found a video that said the diaphragm in the pump is very sensitive to getting debris in it. And it's uh, usually a good cleaning of this diaphragm. This is a rubber diaphragm will solve any pumping problems. So that's, well, that's good. That sounds like it's probably what, what the problem I have is. Because in that YouTube video, it mentioned that it'll pump inconsistently. And I also remember that during the time that I was cleaning the boat, remember back in the beginning of the podcast, I talked about that thorough cleaning and looking at all the nooks and crannies. So one of those nooks that I was looking at and cleaning, I found a Jabsco pump repair kit uh, that the previous owner had purchased. So I figured, hey, problem solved. It'll either be a good cleaning or the spare part uh, will take care of the problem next time uh, I'm at the boat. So I put that to bed and figured, okay, check. Uh, at least mentally, uh, it was fixed in my mind. And uh, the next time I go to the boat, I can fix the shower pump. So a week later, I'm a Paradox, and I take apart the rear shower pump. Uh, I pull the diaphragm out, and I can see it's defective. Uh, the diaphragm is like a black rectangular piece of rubber. It's flat. And on one side, it has uh, one big valve. And on the other side, it has four small valves. And these are one-way valves. And I noticed that the four small one-way valves, uh, the edges, which again are made of rubber, were all curled up and they were clearly not sealing. So these little one-way valves need to seal as this diaphragm of the pump moves back and forth. And that's how it pumps the water. Uh, but hey, I had a spare part that I remember seeing on the boat. So no problem. So I pull out my box of spare parts, and lo and behold, <laughs> it turns out that the spare part for the Japsco pump that I found last fall is not the one I need. So darn, that wasn't going to work. So I figured, hey, there's a fair number of local marine stores. Let me give them a call and see if anyone has the part, including there's a store right there at the marina where uh, uh, I, keep the, uh, I keep the boat. And, you know, unlike a house, uh, some kind of pump on your house or something, these are marine and RV pumps. And unfortunately, places like Home Depot and Lowe's do not carry these pumps or parts. And I couldn't find any at the local marine stores. So then I got online uh, there at the boat. And uh, I did find the part number that I needed, and I quickly looked around to several um, marine uh, mail order places, and none of them uh, had the part in stock. It was all a couple of weeks to get it. So I spent about 30 minutes or so searching the internet for a replacement part. Couldn't find anything. So I said, okay, uh, time to get back to work. So I put the pump all back together, uh, and I figured when I got home, I could spend uh, more time searching for the part or if need be, you know, find a replacement pump and just replace the whole thing if I had to. So when I got home, uh, I could not find a replacement diaphragm for this Japsco Paramax 4 pump. Uh, I did find some other diaphragm pumps on Amazon that would work and fit nicely. Uh, you know, they would fit into the space. They had the same size fittings on them. They seem to be, you know, reputable manufacturers. So replacing the complete pump uh, was my plan B. And, you know, while I was searching around for this replacement pump, I noticed that the Jabsco pumps look just like Flowjet pumps. Uh, Flowjet's another brand. Jabsco is one brand. Flowjet's another brand. I mean, the same dimensions, the same specs. They're painted a different color. The labels are different on them. Uh, but that got me thinking. And, uh, you know, once I saw this, I said, gee, wonder if I could find a replacement diaphragm for the comparable Flowjet pump, uh, the one that's comparable to my Jabsco pump. And lo and behold, I found them. I found diaphragms for that. I actually found them on Amazon. So ordered one from Amazon and uh, actually had it shipped to my son's house, uh, who lives near the marina, because I'm about three and a half, 
to four hours away from the marina. I live in upstate New York. The marina's on uh, Narragansett Bay. Uh, so uh, it's a long drive for me to get there. It's, I just can't hop in a car and run home to pick up a part. And Amazon couldn't get it, uh, get the part to me before I was planning on going back to the boat. So I figured, hey, I'll just ship it to my son's house. So in another day, I'm heading down to the boat, and my plan is to install the replacement diaphragm. And hopefully, problem solved. And if so, I'll order another diaphragm to have as a spare on the boat. Uh, so hopefully the shower pump saga is over, but it's really not over yet. Uh, but I'm hoping that this uh, uh, flow jet diaphragm will work and that my hunch that these pumps are actually probably made in the same factory, they're just sold as two separate brands, uh, is true and uh, it all works. Uh, but either way, I will give you an update uh, in a future episode. You know, let me just make a comment about this. Uh, you know, this is a very typical adventure. I like to call it as an adventure when you own a boat. Stuff always takes longer uh, than you planned for or you thought it would. You know, I'm used to fixing stuff at my house or the car. I'm relatively handy. Um, and fixing stuff on a boat usually takes three to four times longer than fixing a comparable thing uh, on your house or your car. And, you know, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or a hardware store, and, and you can find almost anything you need for your house. Uh, it's not so with boats. And uh, so, you know, if you have a curious mind and you enjoy figuring out stuff like this, then you'll enjoy owning a boat. It'll be great. I do have a curious mind. I do like taking things apart. I always have. As a little kid, I would take stuff apart. Uh, sometimes to my disappointment and to my parents' disappointment, I couldn't figure out how to put it back together. Um, so to me, this is all part of the adventure. But if you're a person who doesn't like doing this type of stuff, that's okay. You can still have a boat and still enjoy it. Uh, but just make sure you can afford to pay someone else to keep your vessel in tip-top shape. So with that little editorial comment, uh, let's wrap up this episode. And like I said, uh, in a future episode, I'll let you know how, did, how the water pump saga turns out. So listeners, uh, thanks for joining us for another episode. I hope you found today's podcast interesting and thought-provoking. If you have any questions or suggestions for the podcast, uh, please get in touch with us. Our email address is Sailing the East at gmail.com. Sailing the East is all one word. You know, we always enjoy hearing from our listeners. And if you enjoy the podcast, hit that follow button on your favorite podcasting application. And if you'd like to support the podcast, at the bottom of the show notes in your podcasting app, you will notice a link that says support this podcast. Click on that link and you can make a pledge of as little as 99 cents a month to help defer the cost of producing this show. We will be spending most of the summer sailing around Narragansett Bay, Long Island Sound, and Buzzards Bay. I hope to see you out on the water. So until next time, signing off from upstate New York. See you soon. Thank you.